struggling to confront the power of its drugs gangs. And now the spotlight is on the government's response. Acabo de firmar el decreto de estado de excepción para que las fuerzas armadas tengan todo el respaldo político y legal en su accionar. President Daniel Noboa declared a state of internal armed conflict as a result of the violence. The president named 22 criminal groups as terrorist organizations and ordered the country's armed forces and police to mobilize and neutralize them. Thousands of soldiers and police officers have been deployed. Tanks and heavily armed security forces patrolling the streets and setting up checkpoints. Ecuador's leaders have declared states of emergency before, as the country's gangs have increased in size and influence, expanding their drug trafficking networks into new illicit economies, taking control of the country's prisons and corrupting agencies and institutions of the state. But Mr. Nabor's declaration of an armed conflict with gangs is the first in the country's history. Guayaquil is prized turf for drug traffickers seeking to guarantee cocaine pipelines to the USA and Europe. The city's criminal underworld is complex. Much of the recent violence is a result of a power vacuum following the killing of Jorge Zambrano, alias Rasquinha, in December 2020. He was the leader of Los Choneros, until recently, Ecuador's largest and most feared gang. Trying to take advantage of the power vacuum left by Rasquinha's death, groups that had once been substructures of the Choneros broke away from their former allies. The resulting rivalry between them drives much of the violence in Ecuador, which has now become one of Latin America's most violent countries. When President Noboa came to power last November, he pledged to tackle the record-breaking violence in Ecuador. His Phoenix security strategy included plans to enhance intelligence services and expand the military's presence at key points of transport infrastructure. With reference to President Nayib Bukele's hardline stance in El Salvador, Mr. Naboa called for a similar so-called iron fist approach in Ecuador. The Phoenix strategy also included prison reform. President Naboa pledged to build a maximum security mega prison, but his tough and crime policies appear to have fueled backlash from the gangs rather than quash them. <laughs> Mr. Naboa's administration has acknowledged that proposals to build new prisons and transfer jail gang leaders there may have set off this most recent wave of violence. Security experts have also warned that hardline approaches are not only costly and ineffective, they're frequently counterproductive and do not provide long-term sustainable solutions to the challenges faced by the country. Harsh political realities are likely to restrain Mr. Naboa's ability to deliver on his security pledges. The legislature is controlled by the opposition and a severe budget deficit will constrain his plans for extra spending. Despite calls for national unity to confront the current crisis, the proximity of the next election means the opposition will likely be wary of offering too much support to the president. Political analysts believe Mr. Naboa might have been too ambitious and many wonder if the president has a clear exit strategy from the war he's just declared.